Hello and welcome back to BS Rugby and to this week's preview for Scotland against the Springboks. What a game this looks to be at BT Murrayfield. Of course, because it's a massive game, I will be doing a live watch along here on the channel. We'll be going live at about quarter to one UK time, so that's about quarter to two uh, South Africa time. We kick off at 1pm, so kick off 2pm South Africa time. This is just a watch along, so do join us for some great chat and banter with others in the chat. Nonetheless, here is the preview then. I was joined by Dan from Stuck in the Scrum, a wonderful Facebook group to discuss this game. Enjoy the preview, hit the subscribe button, leave a like on this video and get your predictions in the comments down below. Enjoy the preview, folks. As always, for a Scotland preview, I'm delighted to be joined by Dan from Stuck in the Scrum. Dan, you looking forward to this weekend? Yeah, big, big weekend. Uh, really looking forward to it. Three massive games on back to back um if you're a rugby fan it's huge huge we chat then about scotland scotland last week victorious over the aussies up in murrayfield it wasn't a classic yeah. but australia unfortunately for them not able to get the job done but scotland certainly did what did you make of the performance it was a little bit all over the place from both teams wasn't it but scotland just yeah. edging it yeah, I mean, it, it didn't. It didn't go the way I expected. I think I said last week that both teams were going to play a million miles an hour, and even mm. the score was quite low. The game was frantic. You saw that going along a lot. That they would dart from end to end. Um, I think both teams showed a little bit of rust. Um, I think that that was clear. They gave away too many penalties. I think Australia slightly more than us, uh, but. No, it, it was really good. Uh, there were some players for me that really impressed. There's There were some players that I thought would do good, but, you know, had a bit of a slow start. I think Hogg had a bit of a quiet game. Um, but I, Duhan van der Merwe was amazing. Pierre Schumann, or as I hear he's called now, the greatest Schumann. Um, just, yeah, huge uh, amount of credit has to go for Scotland. I did have them to win by four last week. I mean... By two, I was close. I think I had South Africa by six the week before. So, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident with my um, with my predictions so far. Yeah, we'll get to your predictions later on. Um, I won't ask you about your Fiji Wales one just in case then. Uh, we'll try not to mention it. <laughs> don't remind I'm me joking, I'm joking. <laughs> don't, don't remind me 2007. Uh, on the other hand then, South Africa obviously came to Cardiff and won. And I thought they put in a really professional display, just controlling the game, using the basics, doing what they do well. And they're very basic things, what they were doing, but they did it so effectively and so efficiently that we couldn't cope with it. Is that something that you worry about going into this game, that South Africa may just be able to take control of the game and play their game? Uh, no, actually. And this, is, this isn't this is to sound, you know, big-headed and and cocky, you know, Scotland's got won four games are unstoppable now. But I was thinking about this a lot earlier. Um, Scotland's record against South Africa isn't the worst in the world. And I think it's because we don't try to play them at their own game. We don't try to throw huge men um, at them. Uh, we're going to try run around them or we're going to try run through them. We saw how they, they, they struggled with some of the Scottish players in particular on the lines. I mean, especially players like Finn Russell, um, when he came on, just seemed to to cut through them like a hot knife through butter. Um, I mean, we're not going to overpower South Africa. They're, they're a bigger or stronger pack. I was impressed that when we played Australia, that even though we had the far lighter scrum, um, well, we had the far lighter pack, that we dominated the scrum. Um, South Africa liked to kick the ball a lot. We all know that. They like to kick the leather off of it. But as we can see, that Scotland's probably one of the only teams in world rugby you can't really kick against um, because they, they'd rather have Stuart Hogg or Finn Russell kicking back at you. Um, and it's you just can't give them that, that sort of possession. We saw in the Six Nations um, just gone, every team that tried to kick against Scotland um, did very poorly. The only team that figured out that how to kick against Scotland is you don't kick against Scotland was Wales and they beat us. Um, so I, I'd be interested to see if South Africa kick the kick the leather off the ball against us, you know, on Saturday. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see. You did mention there actually the history 
uh, between South Africa and uh, Scotland. There have been 27 tests mm -hmm. over the course of the years. Uh, looking at the recent five results, it doesn't look pretty for Scotland. Oh, with, South Africa, them, huh? <laughs> <laughs> with South Africa winning the last seven games, um, Scotland most recently beaten the Springboks back in 2010, 21 points to 17. Most recent fixture was back in 2018, 34-16 at the World Cup for the Springboks, that was. And then before that, at Murrayfield in 2013, the last time they played at Murrayfield was a win for the Springboks, a big win, 28 points to nil. Do you think records like that play into players' minds? Do you think it's something like a hoodoo over them? I think for us in Wales, you look at us, we've been trying to beat the All Blacks since 1956 or whatever it is. And I do think it has an effect on the players. Do you think that will have an effect on the players? Do you think their mindset is that good and that Greg has got them in such a good place in the minute that that will just be a side thought? I don't know. Uh, the Scottish team have shaken off a lot of hoodoos recently. I mean, uh, they won in London for the first time in a long time. They went and they won in Paris. Um, they beat Wales in Cardiff uh, the year before. Uh I think in reality that Scotland were a good side back in the 90s and then going into the 2000s, they were really, really poor. And it probably wasn't until about you know 2015 that Scotland really started to show signs of um, you know going back on the up again. And even though they've had the, the skill there, they've not had the mentality or the belief to see out big games. It, it, that's something that can only be learned over time. Yeah, a team can have all the ability in the world, but without that mentality there, um, it's it's that's it's, you just can't buy it. I mean, that's one of the reasons I think Wales does pretty well consistently is even if they're not having the best game, they have players that are so used to winning big games, so used to seeing out um, big matches, and used to beating other teams. Um, and I think that's something that Scotland are trying to develop. Um, Going into this game, I think man for man, South Africa are, well, the world champions, they are the better side than Scotland. But um, I think the the style of rugby that both teams play falls into Scotland's favour. Yeah, I think they play a very contrasting style, don't they? And I think the big thing uh, for me last week uh, when we faced them was the weather. It was a very big issue, obviously. And um, with the rain pouring down, absolutely horrible weather, it kind of suited the spring box. But on Saturday, lunchtime, it's meant to be dry in Edinburgh. I don't know how much we read into that, whether that will change or not, so with the Scottish weather. But no, it's yeah. meant to be dry. That surely favours you guys, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah. Um... Less handling errors, but I mean, Scotland traditionally is a very, very wet country, even on um, on dry days. I think John Barkley was saying it at the half time during the Australia game. The pitch is really, really, really greasy in Murrayfield. There's nothing you can really do about it. It's not like we're in Cardiff where we can put a big roof over our heads. Uh, I think it's something maybe uh, the SRU should try and invest in, but um, for the style of rugby they play, uh, I'd like to think Scottish people are used to a little bit of rain. Uh, if not, they're in a little bit of trouble. Uh, but yeah, if it stays dry, um, it can only favour Scotland. Yeah. Let's take a look at the teams. Teams were announced yesterday, I believe it was, with a few changes for both sides. Uh, let's go from the fullback then. Stuart Hogg starts once again at fullback. He's captain for this game. Rufus McLean comes back in after impressing against the Tongans with Duan van der Merwe staying at 11. In the centre then, Chris Harris and then Matt Scott comes in tw at 12 for Sam Johnson. Finn Russell and Ali Price are at 9 and 10. And in the front row then you have Pierce Schumann, Stuart McNally and Xander Fagerson with Sam Skinner and Grant Gilchrist with Nick Haining, Jamie Ritchie and Matt Fagerson in the back row. Leaving the best then of Ewan Ashman, what a try that was, by the way, oh, Jamie yeah. Batty, Ollie Kebble, Jamie Hodson, Hamish Watson's on the bench. He does have a slight groin issue, um, but he should be able to come off the bench. George Horn, Haddam Hastings, and Blair Kinghorn. 
your reaction to that team when it came out, what were you thinking? Initially, I was very, very surprised. I really surprised. Uh, a couple of names in particular, like Stuart McAnally starting. I thought that um, after Ewan Ashman's performance against Australia, I thought that he just had that down. Um, so really surprised there. Haining, instead of Watson, I, I've been so sort of entrenched to work, I didn't even hear about Watson's injury until this morning. I have a feeling this is a bit of mind games, though, played between uh, <laughs> Gregor Townsend. Uh, he likes to do things like this from time to time, and that's, that's no secret. Uh, I would probably expect Hamish Watson to come off the bench at some point. If he wasn't fit, he's too much of a big player to risk. I, I think they would have just left him out completely. So I, I don't... I, personally, I, I don't buy this. I, I think there's, there's something going on here. Um, Matt Scott, uh, completely forgot about him, but he's been on fire on the Premiership. Like for Leicester, he's been doing incredibly well. Um, I'm going to be interested to see how he performs in this type of game. And then Rufus McLean, I'm so glad to see him start. Um, Darcy Graham, I don't think, had the best game uh, last week. I, I thought that maybe South Africa might have suited Darcy Graham better than Australia. I pr personally probably would have started um, Rufus McLean against Australia and Darcy against South Africa, but hugely excited. Some of these players had really, really big games. Pierre Schumann showed like, what an animal he is. Xander Fagerson, British and Irish line, we know him. I know we don't have our best locks um, at the moment, but look, Sam Skinner, what being the third, fourth choice at the moment, play for Exeter Chiefs really isn't a bad player to call up. Um, Haining, hit <laughs> six, it surprised me. He Traditionally, he's a number eight. Um, to, to see him playing at six was uh, surprised me, but he can play six. He's done it for Edinburgh. Um, Jamie Ritchie is he's just on this new vein of form at the moment, one of the on-form players of the URC. Uh, so I think future Scotland captain. He's playing incredibly well. Um, Fagerson, big fan of his. Uh, going into the backs, Ali Price is just, since the Lions tour, he's gone to another level. Um, Finn Russell, I don't think, needs to really introduce himself. Duhan van der Merva, expected to start. I think, well, apart from Matt Scott, the whole back line picked itself, really. Yeah, I agree. I think it is a pretty strong squad. Some interesting uh, choices there. And you mentioned Nick Haining at six. And mm -hmm. it, it's interesting because that was somewhere where we really struggled last week was at the breakdown. The South Africans are known for their work at the breakdown, especially when the bomb squad and Malcolm Marks comes off the bench. But talking about the spring box, let's take a look at their squad. This was announced today. A couple of changes once again for them. I'll start with the fullback. Uh, Willie LaRue comes back in. At fullback, Jesse Creel stays on the wing alongside Mapimbi with Damien Diolande and Lucanio Am in the centre. Is that the best centre partnership in the world? Maybe it could be. But interestingly, Herschel Yantes stays at nine, but Elton Yantes get to go at ten. In the front row then, Unche and Bonambi and Naya Kane, same front row that face the Welsh. Etzebeth Mostert comes in as well for this one with Quagga Smith. Sia Khaleesi and Vermeulen at eight. Leaving a the bench then on Malcolm Marks, Kitsoff, Cock, De Jager, Veebs, Reynach, Pollard and Stein. Your reaction to that team, Dan, when it was announced, what do you make of it? Especially the 10 jersey. I think that's an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I mean, when it was dropped, I don't know what it is about South Africa in dropping early squads. Um <laughs> so it took it took me by surprise when they named it as early as they did. Um, lost my train of thought there. South Africa are are showing Scotland a lot of respect here. They they're playing some big big players. I mean, I think gone are the days of teams going, oh yeah, we'll take Scotland seriously. And you know, teams now <laughs> actually have to mean it. Um, some players are really really on form. I know we're going to get to sort of. Um, head-to-head -head, uh, clashes in a minute, but um, I really don't know what to make of the South African squad so far. 
Yeah, it's a fascinating team. There's a couple of changes, as I mentioned there. And you just said we're going to look at some key battles on the field. The first one I want to draw people's attention to is this one. Potentially the two best players on the pitch. It is the captain of the Springboks World Cup winning captain, Lion Series captain uh, for the winning side, of course, Sia Khaleesi against Jamie Ritchie. You mentioned Jamie Ritchie with his form and how he's quietly been getting on with his job, being one of the best performers in the URC. This could be a great battle, couldn't it? I think it will be. Uh, Jamie Ritchie's on fantastic form at the moment, one of the on-form players in world rugby. But Khaleesi is just... He's, a, he's another level. Mm. Uh, as much as I love Ritchie, um, I think he might get schooled a little bit <laughs> next week. But going forward for Ritchie's own development, I think this will do him wonders. Um, he's going to have to go toe-to-toe to him. He, he can't back down. Khaleesi is, just since the World Cup, you thought he peaked there. But year after year after year, he just gets better and better and better and better. Uh he might still be going at 40 at this rate. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Jamie Ritchie will be able to hold his own for a little bit, but uh, Khaleesi, I think, will, his class will shine through in the end. Mm. How much do you think the battle at the breakdown is going to affect this game? Because we know how good South Africa are over the ball, but also Scotland have shown in the past that they can compete at the breakdown. But do you think that Hamish Watson starting on the bench, you have your thoughts about maybe he's not potentially carrying a little knock. Are you surprised that if he isn't carrying a knock, why he's not starting? Because for me, the breakdown is just going to be so key to this game. Yeah, I mean, it's not that I don't think he's not carrying a knock. I think how bad it was was exaggerated uh, massively. I think it's just a bit of game plan. I think that they've put on Haining at six, maybe to, even if they don't win a lot of the breakdown, to try to tire the South Africans out a little bit because the South Africans are going to have to run around a lot as it is to catch the Scots. And I think once they've tired them out a bit, you may see Hamish Watson come on then, um, probably between the you know the 55th and 66th minute. Uh, is, well, barring any sort of injury, that's when I would expect him to come on. Um, I think that you're probably going to see Haining competing a lot. Um, Jamie Ritchie's probably going to do what Watson does, and he's just going to sit behind for a minute and wait for his opportunity and almost just go in for the kill when the opportunity arises. Yeah, I expect that as well. Another interesting key battle that I thought we should talk about are two very exciting players, Ali Price and Yantes. Uh, Ali Price obviously has had a fantastic, I'd say 18 months or so really, and especially over the Lions tour, proved that he was very capable of playing at this level. While his rival in this game is very different to the one that we usually see in the nine jersey of South Africa. Faf de Klerk, he'll look to speed the game up. A very clear tactic last week was when things were slowing down after two phases, the ball would be sent up for the box kick and he'd usually get it on the money for then for the Springboks to really compete at the breakdown. How do you see this battle going? Ali Price probably has the experience, doesn't he? But the man on your right certainly can create something out of nothing. Uh, I think he's a, he's a fantastic player. He's really, really good, really experienced. We all know that. Um, Price, I think he's up to his game to another level. I think Price can go toe to toe with him. Uh, I'd probably go as far to say as I think that Price will win that number nine battle. I think he's game management's better. Um, don't, he's not as quick, but I mean, I think his box kicks are more accurate. Um, He's good for keeping up a tempo. We've seen when Finn Russell does Finn Russell things and gets himself sent off, that he can step in in short periods and manage the game in his absence. Um, so, I mean, as much as I had Khaleesi over Richie uh, in this scrum half battle, I'd, I'd have to back Price. Mm, interesting. And let's talk about the game plan, because we know what South Africa are going to bring. They're going to be physical. They're going to look to compete at the breakdown. They're going to use the kicking game a lot, use the driving mall. Does that suit the way Scotland want to play? The fact that Scotland want to throw it about, they want to express themselves. Do you think maybe that that would really suit the way that you want the game to go? The fact that South Africa may not be so so fluid in attack. Well, yeah, we all know the way that South Africa play. I mean, they're so good at it that they don't even hide it anymore. It's just they say, this is the way we play, what are you going to do about it? Um, 
I think Scotland will throw the ball about, trying to run a couple of holes through them. I expect to see some set plays like we did um, against Australia. Scotland I seem to have been known for that in the last couple of years. Um, what I think will be interesting will be South Africa's defence because if Scotland start to throw the ball around a lot and they're not getting anywhere, what are Scotland going to start to do when they get creative? If if South Africa can stop Scotland's speed, um, with the selection they've picked, Scotland can't just go, okay, well, we'll try to play them at power. They're going to try to have to maybe revert to a kicking game or, you know, try plan, plan B or B to try plan A harder. So I think South Africa's defence in particular is going to be um, massive in this. Uh, we all know that South Africa are probably going to kick it and they're probably just going to try and drive Scotland slowly back and grind them down. Mm. Um, it just can, can Scotland play fast enough to get around it. Yeah, that's the thing. That's that's the only concern I would have for Scotland is if plan A of throwing the ball around doesn't work, you can't overpower them. And that's what happened with us was because of the weather and everything going on. We couldn't throw the ball about like we wanted to. And then we had to revert to try and match them physically, which we obviously couldn't do. And they were winning the battle at the breakdown, smashing us in the scrum, which every team has done this season. But but it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. I, I'm going to get a prediction off you. How do you see this game going? I don't know what's happened to my camera there. Sorry. Um, I'm having a different, a different one. Do you know, my heart says South Africa. Uh mm. And my head says Scotland, even though I oh, think nice. I thought to myself it'd be the other way around. Okay, explain uh, to me. Yeah, when I, I mean, like I know that South Africa man for man have the better squad. Um, but Scotland being at home, um, the home crowd, the style of play that they make, the teams that are selected, it's just. I, th I think it's going to go Scotland's way, even though on the inside, my gut feeling says South Africa. It's um, so bizarre. I'm usually the, the mm. other way about with this one. Um, so, look, this game could go either way. I mean, it could swing five points in either direction. Oh, this has been the hardest one for me to call it out of all the games so far. Mm. Um, but I'm going to go with um, Scotland by three. Oh, interesting. Okay, then. <sighs> I'm going to back the Springboks. Uh, I just think that they're going to overpower you. Um, I think oh, I think if, if you can get quick ball, I think that'll make a massive difference, but I'm not confident in your back row especially the fact that Hamish Watson is in, a, in there, to be able to be a fantastic manager of the game. He really controls the game really well. He's a fantastic goal kicker. So I'm surprised that he's not starting, but coming off the bench, someone to control the game, maybe close it out if need be, isn't a bad option. Finally then, give me a accurate score prediction. You said Scotland by about three, but how high do you see the score go? 23-20. Oh, and finally then, so you give me your score prediction. If Scotland were to win this game, how big would this be for Scotland? Because you've obviously been in Australia, they're a decent side, but they're not at the level of this South African team. So how big would this be for Scotland? What kind of milestone would this be for the Scotland team? I think Scotland have had a coming of age moment. I would I wouldn't go as far as to say that the this Australia side isn't at the level of South Africa. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Australia beat South Africa in back-to-back -back games not too long ago. Um, Australia have been the, the on-form side of world rugby. Uh, I know that they were missing one or two players. Uh, we were very rusty. Uh, we were missing one or two players as well. I think, uh, I don't know, I've got, I'm in two mindsets. I could see Scotland winning every game of the autumn and then still finishing fifth in next year's Six Nations. Uh, it'd just be such a typically Scottish thing to do. Um, but, I, I mean, we, we every year we always have that one marquee performance in the autumn. You can argue we had it against Australia um, or we'll, we'll come like within two points of beating the All Blacks. Um, it's, I, I think, for Scotland to go through an autumn campaign 
um, and just sort of going almost to a whitewash. Um, that would just be a real sort of marker for Scotland to say, look, we, we're one of the main players now. Uh, you know, I could also see us beating South Africa but losing to Japan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have that mentality there quite yet. Yeah, I think that's going to take some time, isn't it? But it should be a great game. Uh, Dan's back in Scotland. I'm back in the spring box. But do let us know in the comments down below your predictions for this one. I will be doing a watch long for this one. So make sure to subscribe to the channel for that and turn the little bell on, which will notify you when we go live. And of course, do check out Stuck in the Scrum, the Facebook page and group. There'll be links in the description for that as well.